Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and this is a top grade top up for higher tier. This lesson, nuclear equations. This topic was suggested by Survivor Ollie. Thanks. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Nuclear equations is one of those topics in physics which sounds much worse than it actually is. All you really need to be able to do to master this skill is be able to do the kind of maths that you were probably able to do when you were five, basic addition and subtraction, and to understand where it is that alpha and beta particles come from. That's a lot more simple than it sounds though. Let me explain. If you can't remember exactly what alpha and beta particles are, then just click this link here to see the previous video where I explain all about it. But the short version is that an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, just like a helium nucleus. A beta particle is a fast-moving electron. Because I'm Mr. Thornton, the element which I'm going to focus on for our equation is thorium. Now thorium is a good one to go with because different isotopes emit different types of radiation. We're going to start with thorium-232, so here is thorium's entry in the periodic table. This is the most common isotope of thorium. So you can see that we've got a mass number of 232 and we've got a proton number of 90. So there are 90 protons in this element and it's got a mass number of 232, which means that there's 142 neutrons in an atom of thorium. Remember, to work out the number of neutrons, you just do the mass number and then subtract the proton number from that number. So 232 take away 90 gives you 140. Very large atoms like this one tend to be unstable. That is, the atom is trying to stabilize itself. And the way it does that is by emitting things from its nucleus. It gets to lose energy in that way. You don't really need to worry about exactly how it decides what to emit from its nucleus. All you need to be aware of is that it's trying to stabilize itself. And so it fires things out of the nucleus. Because this isotope of thorium, thorium-232, is an alpha emitter, it gives off an alpha particle. Remember, an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. The alpha particle has a mass, of course, then, of four. That is the mass of the two protons and the mass of the two neutrons added together. And it's got a proton number of two. So we can represent our alpha particle like this. We have the symbol for an alpha particle, and we have a 4 for the mass number and a 2 for the proton number. This is exactly the same as you'd put for helium, only with the alpha symbol instead. Now because our thorium atom has lost this, it's lost 4 from its mass and it's lost 2 from the proton number, we subtract 4 from the mass number and we subtract 2 from the proton number. It's that simple. You've taken away 2 protons, you've taken away 4 units of mass altogether, and so in doing that you've reduced both of those numbers. So, the 232 minus 4 gives us 228. And the 90 minus 2 gives us 88. Now, I'm not going to put what element this is. If you really want to find out what element it is, you could use a periodic table to look it up. But you don't actually need to be able to tell anyone what element this is. The course specification is quite specific about that. All you need to do is be able to make the numbers balance. So when you see this type of equation, what you're going to see is somewhere in here, there's going to be a gap and you need to fill it in. You need to know that the alpha particle has a mass of four and a proton number of two. And you need to be able to say, well, that means I'm going to take four off the big number, the mass number, and it means I'm going to take two off the small number, the proton number. Maybe they'll have the end product and the fact that it's an alpha emitter and you need to work your way backwards. So in which case, just put them together. Take whatever your mass number is and add it to the other mass number and you'll get the new mass number, the mass number that really your equation should start with. Same with the proton number. But essentially, just think about it like this. You've got a large atom, you've taken away four mass units from it and two of them are protons. The numbers in your equation just need to reflect that. It's pretty easy, right? Beta emission is a tiny bit more difficult, but only a very tiny bit more difficult. And that's because of the way that a beta particle is produced. This is another attempt by the atom to stabilize itself. And what I'm going to focus on is a less common isotope of thorium. This time we're going to look at thorium-234. 
So this is a slightly heavier isotope of thorium. It's got a couple more mass units. So it weighs a tiny bit more. It's got two more neutrons in there. We can see that it's still got the same number of protons. So it's still the same element. It would still react chemically in the same way, but it's physically a little bit heavier. The way that a beta particle is produced is a neutron inside the nucleus decays. It breaks into two things. Now charge has to be conserved. So if we're producing one negatively charged particle, that's our beta particle, which remember is just a fast moving electron, then we've got to balance that out with a positively charged particle. So that neutron, which has an overall charge of zero, it splits into an electron and a proton. Again, you don't need to worry too much about the mechanism here but you do need to be aware a neutron has become an electron and a proton, which means that the proton number has increased. The mass number hasn't actually changed at all here because a proton and a neutron have about the same mass. So we produce the electron, we've got to produce a proton to conserve charge, so the proton number goes up by one and the mass number stays the same. Instead of having thorium-234, with a mass number of 234 and a proton number of 90, we get a new element with a proton number of 91, but the mass number remains 234. Again, you could use a periodic table to look up which element this is if you really wanted to, but you don't need to be able to do that, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. You could follow this process for pretty much any element. All you need to remember is during alpha emission, the mass number drops by 4, the proton number drops by 2. During beta emission, the mass number remains the same, but the proton number goes up by 1 because you've created a new proton from that neutron, which has also formed the electron, which is the beta particle. Remember that beta particle is being fired out of the nucleus. It's not coming from that atom's share of electrons, which are floating around it where you'd normally find an electron. So as I said, basic maths. If it's an alpha particle, subtract 4 and 2. If it's a beta particle, then you're going to add 1. Fairly simple. You've just got to remember which is which. The alpha particle is fairly straightforward, and you should be fairly familiar with what an alpha particle is already. The beta particle is the only one which is just a tiny little bit more complex. But really, the only new information that I've covered in this video, the only information which is really completely new to you, is that it's a neutron that turns into a proton and an electron, and that's why the proton number goes up. Everything else you ought to be really, really comfortable with. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.